it's the Mike Rogers Show. Mike Rogers here with you. And today we have the lead singer of a very popular band called Bad Mary. Bad Mary drawing on the influences of the likes of Blondie, the Ramones, Green Day, and the Dolly Rots. This tight-knit family unit uses humor and the power of music to push back on all the crap, they wrote it, not me, going on in the world. Bad Mary holds up a warped mirror to the current culture and reminds us that having fun is the best way to give yourself an escape from the craziness. So everyone, please welcome Miss Amanda Mack. Yay! Hi, Mike. Thank you for the... how are you? I just feel wonderful after that very warm, beautiful welcome. Thank you. I'm great. How are you doing? (laughs) Oh, wait, I forgot to say... And if you like this video, please click like. It's over here. I don't know which side it's on. Like and subscribe. And um, it's going to be great. Anyways, Amanda Mack in the studio today. Amanda, can you you give us a little introduction of yourself? Oh, sure. Um, Well, hi. Uh, My name is Amanda Mack. I am the lead vocalist in Bad Mary, which... Uh, Mike beautifully <laughs> gave our intro before. Um, I uh, am a punk rock singer. I love music. I miss Japan. I'm very excited to be talking to Mike Rogers right now. I miss you, dude. Um, and I've been really uh, involved in some sort of music since uh, birth. Um, we might get into this later. My dad is our drummer of our band. Um, mm-hmm. So my whole family in one way or another um, was involved in music somehow. So I've just been on a wacky ride since I was a kid. And now I'm here and <laughs> it's yeah, that's great. great. So, okay. So let's talk about that. So how did you get, how did you get into Bad Mary? But before that, how, tell us about your childhood, like, um, I got my first guitar when I was six or whatever, however that happened. Tell us about that and tell us about the first concert you went to and the first record you ever bought. Okay. Hmm. Um, Well, there was a definite, um, I don't really remember it clearly. I've been told this story um, Hmm. when I was older. But when I was little, I um, I had like one of those little kiddie pools, you know, a little swimming pool for like a two, three year old that I would sit and I would pretend to be Ariel from The Little Mermaid because that was like the movie that was out at that oh. time when I was little. And um, I would sing along with it. And my parents were inside the house and realized like, oh, no, she's singing it correctly. She's she's hitting all the right notes. And like I hadn't been in any classes. I was just listening to it. So kind of from then they realized that that might be something that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. Um, And because of my dad's a musician, my grandma was a singer, my um, my aunt, my my father's sister was is a was a professional oboe player in the symphony. So we all did different kinds of music, but there was always music. So I wasn't sure from when I was that little, like where I was going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been a wild journey from singing in my backyard kiddie pool mm-hmm. and somebody hearing me and going, oh, there's something to this, to Bad Mary. Um, I grew up doing a lot of musical theater in school because that was the best outlet for for singing. Um, I really do enjoy theater still and how theatrical it can be, which definitely comes out in, in Bad Mary. Um, we have a lot of story songs and a lot of like concept stuff um that's just really fun to do um so i definitely draw on growing up in the theater community a lot in this very very different medium um i could talk for like an hour about that so (laughs) well no that that, or days i could talk to you for days (laughs) so i just have one little interjection here so who did you get your voice from you had to get it from your dad or your mom or maybe grandma or something like that so we have a, a new EP that just came out and it is our second cover EP where my dad actually sings vocals on it. So we have a cover oh. of um, White Room by Cream on mm-hmm. that. And he sings the main vocals, but then I will come in with the higher harmonies. So mm-hmm. hearing us both together on the same track, I think really highlighted for me how much I probably did get my voice and my, my tone from him because you don't get to hear him sing a lot in bad mary but my dad actually has a really really great singing voice he's got a, a beautiful baritone bass um and i i definitely think i draw from from that side of the family my grandma was a big band singer so like totally different style but i'm gonna throw some her way too because she's great so de- definitely them 
Wow. So okay. So you you played you played in a school with theater and sang and did all of that. And then okay. So what? How did you get? Um, well, after school, did you make a band or were you in another band or how about that? So I my um, to backtrack a bit more. When I was born, I was brought home from the hospital in a baby onesie of the band my dad was in at the time. Mm -hmm. So growing up, he was always in a rock band. He was in the same band for like the first 13 years of my life. So I would go to their shows. I remember going to like bars and clubs and stuff just to like see them play and be in that atmosphere. So I wasn't in a band at that point, but I was always around that environment. And it was something that was never foreign to me. Um, the first band that I was in was actually at Hofstra University. Um, so I didn't go through any bands in high school, although I did notice I really, really liked the rock musicals. So I would only audition for stuff like the Rocky Horror Show or um, like Tommy or the the Green Day, like like anything that had like a rock component to it. Well, That's wait, what I wait, wanted to do. Wait, so you were in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, your university production, high school production? Of no, that? in high school, I was in the Rocky Horror Show. I was and, Columbia. And who, you were Columbia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. And, and did you did you do the um, tap dancing and do all that, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And my favorite part was I got to, like, write an entire monologue, like, off the top of my head and just make up whatever I wanted to say and then, like, tap dance off the stage and then sing, like, super high notes at the end and just do whatever I wanted. Like, <laughs> if, if I watched those old tapes, there is definitely some stuff that, like, I don't even realize, like, stayed with me from that where they just gave me free reign. So it was... I didn't feel like I was playing a character in it. I felt like I was just getting to do whatever I wanted to do on stage. It was so much fun. And that definitely opened a door into what I wanted to explore artistically later on. Wow. Okay. So then you, you in Hofstra University, you were in a band. And mm -hmm. what was what was that band's name? So that was Madam X. Um, no, that wasn't Madam X. That is another band I was in, though. Um, but before Madam X, there was David and the Hendersons. David and the Hendersons is a band that still exists today. Oh. Um, it's just made up of different students. So mm -hmm. that's like uh, the university band that our David, David Henderson, um, ah. still still runs at the Wait department. Wait a minute, David was your university teacher? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. So you got, a, you got an A in his class. Court. Uh no, I did not get an A in his <laughs> class. We talk about it all the time, and I'm always like, David, you gave me a B minus in your class, and his response to me is, No, no, you earned a B minus, and it's just, it's still, <laughs> we still go back and forth about it. Sometimes during the show, we'll like bring it up and be like, Remember when? How, yeah. how can I still get an A? But okay, so you were in D David and the Hendersons was your university professor's band. Mm -hmm. Still has the band. Mm -hmm. But he plays bass in your band. How did that happen? So he plays guitar in our band. Well, guitar, I mean. Um, yeah. But he has played drums in David and the Hendersons before. He has played bass in David and the Hendersons before. Basically, whatever they're missing, mm -hmm. he figures out how to like jump in and fill in those parts. So it's always different for him what he's going to be playing. And that um, he plays guitar in our iteration um, because when I was in David and the Hendersons, he was the guitar player. So, oh. so there's 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 a there's a storyline of how our David and the Hendersons became Bad Mary, and I I blurted out Madam X. That's like the middle of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I jumped ahead a little bit, but that's okay. So what, all right, tell me about Madam X. So Madam X um, is when we changed our version's name. Uh, we all held, had all graduated, um, so basically our version of David and the Hendersons wasn't moving away. A mm -hmm. lot of times when people graduate, they'll move home, they'll move across the country, they'll they'll go get a job, go on tour, something like that. Um, you know, it was all, all performers, so once graduation hit, you never knew yeah. where anyone was going to get work. Our, our version of it was all staying local in New York, mm -hmm. and we were just kind of like, so we have fun playing together, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we want to keep? Do we want to keep doing this? Mm -hmm. Maybe make this a thing. And then we changed our version's name to Madam X, so we could take off and kind of become our own thing. But we were only playing covers then. Ah. Oh. So in the Madam X era, we were only really playing covers. There were a couple of other band members that um, 
we don't have in Bad Mary. Um, Rory Levin, who we mentioned in one of our songs, is a real person. Um, she was our drummer from Adam X, a very close friend of the band still. We talk to her all the, all the time. Um, but she was our drummer at that point. She had to move to Florida for a job. That's how my dad got in the band. So I was kind of like, oh, well, I um, I know a guy. I don't know if he would be be up for it or really interested, but I'll reach out, meaning my dad. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you know, slipping, like, I, I know slipping ten dollars under the table. Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but I didn't. I didn't know it, he had hadn't been. Um, it, you know, as you know, it is a grind. It's a lot of work. And he'd been in a band when I was growing up and all through school and everything. And he hadn't been in a group like this for a while. So I, I didn't know if it was something he was still interested in. Um, but he he very much was. He very, very much was. I'm very lucky for that. So it's still this wild experience that, like, I don't think I could have ever predicted, but it just, like, all stars aligned. And um, that's how he joined the band. Um, and then we've got Mike on bass. Mm -hmm. um, and as Madam X, we kind of started to write originals, but weren't tied to that name. And that name was so many other things. It's like another band. Right, right, um, right. Mm. You know, or, or probably several other bands out there, but one that we were getting confused with online. We were like, this is too much. So we were like, name change before we do anything. Let's figure it out. And boom, Bad Mary. And we've been Bad Mary ever since. Well, so so how did you come up with Bad Mary? <laughs> so that was uh, that was David. That was definitely David. Um, we were and we still have this chat going on Facebook uh, Messenger for like the last decade, probably longer at this point of like, if I scrolled all the way up, I could copy paste and send you the exact conversation. Um, but of all the random band names of this one can't be taken, that one can't be taken, like random word combinations. If you put it into one of those generators and spit it out, like that's what we were trying and nothing stuck. And it was like six o'clock in the morning, which to a lot of people is a normal time to wake up. For me, I'm a nocturnal creature. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you know, um, and David messages the group, hey, how about Bad Mary? And Mike kind of pokes me awake and is like, oh, David, David just threw this out. What do you think about it? And I was like the grumpiest person on the planet that I was like, I don't even care. It's garbage. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't wake me up. I'm sleeping. <laughs> um, but like fast forward to later in the afternoon and I'm really like chewing on it. I'm like, Bad Mary as a group. Like, that's that's interesting. And um, Sue Henderson brought up that if you shout it across a parking lot, you mm -hmm. can understand it. And that's the biggest thing on stage. You go see a band and you're like, oh, this band is great. What are they called? And they're like, hi, where? Uh, and you never know where to find them or where they've gone or what happened afterwards. And so that was a, a big thing that was important is can you, is it clear? Mm hmm. And it checked like every box that we had, and I still I still hear about how grumpy I was um, that morning <laughs> when I was woken up by it ten years later. So I'll be the first to bring it up here. Yes, I was grumpy, <laughs> but I'm not anymore. <laughs> so, but so when I first found out about Bad Mary, and I don't even remember how I found out about, about Bad Mary, I thought your name was Mary. For Everyone the does longest time. Everyone does. I respond to it. I'm not mad about it. Um, but no, I'm Amanda. <laughs> yeah. Just, just say, no, we killed Mary and uh, <laughs> buried her in the backyard. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So like, um, there is there is no Mary. She was terrible. Yeah. Bad. So um, how about like when you were a kid, the first concert you went to? Um, The first the first concert, the first like. I don't want to say it wasn't a real concert because when I was like three, I went to see Sharon Lois and Bram and it was like amazing um, mm -hmm. as far as like child entertainers are concerned. Yeah. My first real rock show was I was 11 and my dad, our drummer, Bill Mack, um, took me to see Paul McCartney. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that was like the first like, oh, we're in like a stadium and there's just fire on each side of the stage and like i i think i was born a beatles fan um i think that's just something that's like inherited in my family um so seeing that like definitely changed or switched something in me and like after that that's all i wanted to do was like go see concerts um but 
watching even the like the wing songs the wing songs are great the Beatles songs are great they played live and let die flames are all over and it was just like i'm in the same room as a beetle yeah for an 11 year old is like your first like this is what a concert can be um wild absolutely wild i will never ever forget it and i grew up i had a poster of paul mccartney like from that concert and my room for like the and just because i was like i want to do that Ah. i was like i want to do that i was looking at that as like my first like doorway into it and i was like i want to do that i want to experience that wow so well got to tell your dad that mike was a hardcore beatles fan oh yeah you know what the beatles are right the bit the Beatles, so the very only really, really, really hardcore Beatles fans know this. So they're I, I want to know. It was in the movie Help. I think it was Help, the second movie, and there was a Russian spy who was trying to kill Ringo, and he, he's one time they're talking to him, and he goes, "I've got to kill the Beatles," and so that's what I call them on my radio show. Er- everything is so the Japanese. <laughs> Who are the Beatles? I'm like, the Beatles, you know, you know, come on, the Beatles. (laughs) Start calling them the Beatles in front of your dad. And and if he goes, hey, that's funny, then then he knows. He knows. He's a a true Beatleite. (laughs) Beatleite. I think, I have a feeling, I have a feeling he will. I didn't, but I have a feeling he will. (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, anyone who saw their old movies would, would know that they're skating on the ice i can't remember anyway how about the first record that you bought with your own money what was that first record that i bought with my own money i vividly remember this um Mm -hmm. it was at tower records Mm -hmm. and i had a 20 dollar bill in my hand i was so excited to buy this album and i remember thinking that like the name of it was something dirty Mm -hmm. so i walked up my like little tiny self i walked up to the register and I was just like, hey, do you have um, do you have Dizzy Up the Girl by the Goo Goo Dolls? And like, I didn't know what it meant. Oh. So I was like, I don't know if I can say, am I going to get in trouble for saying this? Like, I was this like little tiny thing, but I knew I wanted that album. And I will never forget how like sheepish I was because I was like, is this a, like, I'm like little. So I was like, I don't know if this is a curse. Is this some some term that means something else that I don't know? Because I, <laughs> I still don't know why. But I will never ever forget that. Um, but I, that was the first album I ever bought. And then on its, um, was it twentieth or twenty fifth anniversary recently? Time, time is escaping for me. But it just had a, a fairly big anniversary. My best friend bought the vinyl for me um, for for my birthday that year because of like that milestone. Like that's that's something that has stuck with me. So I love that question because I will never ever forget the first first album I bought. Wow, that's really cool. I think the first record I bought was a monkeys record yeah Yeah. dw washburn which was not a big hit so anyway so okay so this has been really an interesting talk so amanda i'd like to come back with part two in just a minute well tomorrow (laughs) and talk to you about bad mary let's talk about bad mary what's going on with the band your new record touring everything and like um you can tell us secrets like you know how much like you actually hate this person or you love this person, whatever. You can do whatever you want. It's fine with us because we're an open-minded audience. So anyway, so this is um, the Mike Rogers Show. And our guest today is the beautiful lead singer of Bad Mary, Miss Amanda Mack. We'll be back with her tomorrow for more and talking about the band Bad Mary. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you for having me, Mike. You're awesome to talk to.